So basically, I've been covering a lot of the nation chain stuff that's happened throughout the world, throughout the world of football. Now in today's video, we're going to take a look at the players that have changed nations and it's not really gone to plan. Now I have a lot of really interesting stories in this one, okay? So stick around, it's going to be very interesting. It's not going to be boring, oh this guy which everyone knows about, there might be one or two of them, but the rest of them are quite interesting. Now FIFA 18 is coming up guys and I want to cover the new FIFA 18 nation changes that happened for that game. If you want to see that video, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. So greatly appreciated and I'm actually doing a FIFA 18 giveaway here on my Twitter page which you can go over retweet and follow those pages and stuff like that if you guys want a copy of the game that is your best way to get it for free but anyway let's get into the first player because of course we're gonna start we're gonna start interesting all right I'm gonna start with one of the most interesting stories I've heard of now we actually have Laurent Maluda now I didn't think this would be a thing some guy on Twitter told me about this guy and to be fair to you mate you're brilliant brilliant player brilliant story to the party really so as guys know he's a French international he played 80 games for them scoring nine goals for France over an eight-year career, which is, you know, pretty decent. But now he's actually playing for French Guiana, right? Which is, uh, is really, really strange. It's a really, really strange story. And that's why I'm making this video because it's that interesting. Now, everyone's aware, obviously, Maluda played a lot of games for France. He obviously did pretty well for them as well. Now, French Guiana, now let's listen to this, okay? Maluda became available to play for his home nation, a non-FIFA association, after a five-year absence from the French squad. Now, in June 2017, he was actually in the French Guiana squad for the 2017 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Bit of a mouthful, that one. Now, he actually made his debut against Barbados in a friendly. But then, however, he was ruled ineligible for the Gold Cup since CONCACAF rules for the tournament use FIFA eligibility guidelines and Maluda basically remains cap tied to France. Despite this, on length of July 2017, the most interesting part of the whole story, Maluda was selected to start for French Guiana's Gold Cup match against Honduras, resulting in a forfeit after a, well, a nil-nil draw. So he switched nation and actually apparently according to some guy on Twitter actually got his team kicked out of the tournament so basically like he wasn't supposed to play for him and French Guiana forfeits match over use of Maluda now Honduras have been awarded a 3-0 win by forfeit over French Guiana which used former French national teammate or team star Florent Maluda despite being told he was ineligible to play for the match last Tuesday so they went on to play him basically and he shouldn't have done he got his team kicked out of the tournament that's not a great nation change that's one of the worst ones out there now for the second player we have Koulibaly again okay? and this guy is a pretty Really interesting situation, okay? He actually could have played for France, he played for them in the under 20s, but then he decided to play for Senegal. Now, Koulibaly was born, okay, to Senegalese parents in France, so technically, yeah, he gets to play for both. So, he had the choice completely who he wanted to play for. Now, obviously, he chose to play for Senegal, you know, internationally. That's what he's picked. That's done deal. There's no going back on that. But, yes, guys, the situation was, okay, that of course he played for France under 20s and stuff, but Didier de Champs actually wanted to call him up, okay? Despite interest from call ups and Didier de Champs, he made his debut for Senegal. This was like September 2015, Koulibaly changed federations and joined the Senegal national football team despite the interest and call up from Didier de Champs. So yeah, he now plays in African Cup of Nations for Senegal and stuff. He hasn't done anything internationally. I mean, he hasn't really like, it's not really gone too well, I don't think so far. It's not gone bad, but not too well. Uh, but of course, he could be playing for France. You know, he had the call up there. Didier de Champs called him up. He's now obviously doing bits for Napoli. You know, Chelsea won him and stuff like that. He's one of the like known centre backs in Europe at the minute. Obviously, you know, France have got, you know, one of the best teams in the world at the minute. I mean, he may not actually get into the team right now, but he's got a good chance because he's a very, very good centre back. I mean, they got into the finals of the Euros. They're, they just look like they're gonna like dominate football for a while now. So maybe he missed, maybe he missed it. You know, maybe he has missed a you know, big future ahead of him at France, and he picked Senegal. Will he live to regret that? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Now, one of the most famous ones, which I'm gonna talk about, because of course this is a very interesting one. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because everyone knows pretty much everything there is to know about Diego Costa, and obviously he's switched to Spain. Now, of course, he was born in Brazil. You know, he played for Brazil and like a couple of friendly matches, but it still allowed him to switch. And he actually played for Spain. Now, he played for Spain, 16 games them, six goals. Didn't go to plan, did it? Didn't really go to plan. So in his first like, you know, major tournament or whatever for Spain, it was actually in the World Cup in Brazil. And yes, yeah, Spain got slammed in that. They didn't do very well at all. And yeah, I mean, obviously, what has he done so far internationally? Let's have a look at what he's won. I mean, he's won nothing for like, you know, like he's just won nothing for country, to be fair. He's won a lot for club, Chelsea, a couple of Premier Leagues, obviously League Cup. He's won loads of like individual stuff. He won loads of stuff at Atletico Madrid. In the Liga, Copa del Rey, but he hasn't won anything for Spain. Now, I'm not saying that he won't because Spain is still a very good team and uh, they could potentially in the future. But a 28 year old, of course, is getting a little bit older. He wants to move from Chelsea. What's going to happen? I don't know. But yeah, moving to Spain wasn't the best nation change move we've ever seen, was it? Now, the next one is one that, you know, still could be, it still could be good. It still could be good, but at the minute, it's not that great, to be honest. So it is Jack Grealish. He obviously, he's now decided to play for England on the 21s. He, played, he represented, you know, Republic of Ireland for 
were loads. Under 17s, under 18s, under 21s. And I think he was actually made captain as well. No, he wasn't actually. And I mean, he could still have a good future and a good career ahead of him with England and stuff. It's going to be tricky for him because there's lots of obviously English players that are stars and stuff like that. So we'll be, we'll be tricky for him. But the reason why it was a bit of a dodgy move is because, you know, he faced a lot of backlash for this move. So Irish fans like, really, really did slate him. O'Neill confirmed that Grealish had turned down another call up to the Irish senior squad, this time for a friendly against England, the European Championship qualifier. Now, England manager Roy Hodgson at the time actually disclosed that although he had been in contact with Grealish, he had chosen not to include him in their squad because this guy could face massive backlash from Ireland. And yeah, he's faced a lot of criticism over his time and stuff, over the move to change to England. But yeah, this guy could, you know, still be good for England, but in a minute, our Ireland fans are just absolutely slating him and stuff, have been slating him. And if he doesn't go on to do anything for England, they'll just be like, what a waste, he could have played for Ireland. So, it's a bit of a tricky one. That's not least once again a bit of a controversial one but one that I featured because of a certain interesting reason actually is Wilfred Zaha now this guy obviously played for England under 20 no, was it under 19s under 21s and he played a couple of friendlies for the main team as well because he only played friendlies or whatever he was allowed to switch over to Ivory Coast which has now made seven appearances for and scoring two goals now the interesting stuff about this okay that Gareth Southgate indicated he would try to dissuade Zaha from changing allegiances due to his consistent club form so this is like you know England's manager right and he said to Zaha don't change, don't swap, because you could be a bit, of, you could have a good future at England. Now he's not listened to the current England manager, and he's gone to play for Ivory Coast. Now he is only 24 years of age, so he could, still could do a lot for country. He hasn't done anything just yet. But the crazy thing is, you know, that England manager wanted to keep him, said he had a massive future with England. He didn't want to listen to that. He wasn't that interested, and he's gone off basically to play for Ivory Coast. Anyway, guys, if you have found this video interesting, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to me for more football and FIFA 18 videos coming up soon. I've got a Sunday League stuff coming up as well shortly which is going to be interesting. Anyway, take it easy, guys. Have a good day. Peace.